reason most of the people used the Model A was because of the availability of them. There were so many of them around. They had made quite a few million of them between 1928 and 1931. Also the fact that they were light. A four-door sedan only weighed 2,400 pounds. Also, they were relatively easy on fuel. They were very simple to work on. There was absolutely nothing there that was that took a genius to work on them. In fact, even till this day, parts are still available for these in uh, unbelievable amounts. And that's what a lot of people liked about them because they could go to the average junkyard in the back of an old garage and get a part for practically nothing and keep their vehicles running on the beach. You know what? The hot spot is like A17. A17. A7, no, A17. If you want to get some clams, uh, there's a nice hole down there at A17. Yeah, yeah. Do you have down the shack? Did you anything there? I haven't heard anything of the judge's shack. I don't know. If we go to Gilligan's, is the speech in good shape, or do we got we got let more air out? You think? Yeah. Oh, okay. Would be pretty good. Well, we'll do good. All right. All right. tires on it, which enabled it to go on the beach. They were bald, we call them Cadillac tires. And if you deflated the tires, uh, you could just go on the beach. You didn't need four-wheel drive, and it was great. Also, you wouldn't use a tire with a lot of tread. The least amount of tread, the better the vehicle ran, because it wouldn't dig into the sand, it would roll over it. Again, years ago, my wife and my four kids, we were back when he used to be able to drive around over the jetty and around to the back. We were back there, the kids were catching blowfish. And uh, I happened to look up, and there was Charlie Berger on, on the road, the sand road into his lease site on top of a dune underneath his Model A beach buggy. And at that time, he was late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. So I w walked on up and I said, what's the matter, Charlie? He says, the starter's shot. So he had another Model A by his house <laughs> that he used for spare parts. So we, I helped him, we went over there, we took the starter off that Model A and brought it over and exchanged it for the one, got him started and he was happy as a lark. <laughs> <laughs> one day I met him on the road going into the landing. I saw him coming 
and all of a sudden he turned off and went right down over the hill. I looked at the trolley, you all right? Oh, get it out, all right. I said, why didn't you stop? I haven't got any brakes. I said, well, how do you drive that with no brakes? You drive my foot. <laughs> and that's the way he lived with that thing. He was an institution. He was a great there. bird. Yeah, he really was. Neat guy. And it was neat a shame guy. when he died that yeah. the, the shack was destroyed. Yeah. It, just, yeah. it was gone. It was just part yeah. of the history yeah. of Island Beach. It really Beach. is. It's part, it was part of history. Really, that, the metal A was, was the main transportation for people who had their right. shacks down here yep. because they couldn't get to there. Yep. Take their ice, no, no electric, of course, right. they had to take ice and water and everything else down. Yep. And without those Model A's, they would be in real trouble. Yeah, sure. A long time, Peter. Well, it has been. Um, Bob, I came to Ocean County about 1950, and you came in when, 50? I started Fishing Island Beach in 1956, and I got my first beach buggy, a Model A Ford, called the Sandhopper. I got that in uh, uh, 58. So it was right around that time that you and I began. But then when we really got close, I think, was when I got involved in the Beach Buggy Association as president, and uh, which was in the early 70s. And of course, you were with game, the Fish and Game, and that's when we started working together on a lot of things. As I said earlier, I kept my Model A Ford behind Cap Calvin's bait and tackle shop. And I would have, most all my life, I've been predominantly a nighttime fisherman. And I would come down at 9, 10. It was, not, it was common for me to show up here at midnight and <laughs> go out on the beach. But because Mr. and Mrs. Calvin lived upstairs at the, the tackle shop, I would get my Model A, and it was, of course they're very, very light, and I would push it, literally I'd push it up the street so I could start it. Back in those years, most of the people that lived in the houses were summertime residents, so it was pretty desolate when I was here in the fall. So, but I would push it up the street, and that's when I would start it. And it would not start. It would not, so I could get it started. So, Cap Collins, shop opens up, I go and drink coffee till Sterling Flitcroft gets to his gas station. And I literally pushed the Model A across the Central Avenue and <laughs> into his gas station. And now, mind you, I missed, just probably missed five or six hours fishing when I was, because I couldn't get it started. So he just says to me, Bob, did you turn the gas on? Well, the Model A's had a gravity feed from the gas tank in the cow down, and there was a valve down the bottom that you turned, shut the gas off with. It would, otherwise it would drain down into the carburetor. And I just looked at him and I said, never mind. And I got in, I started, turned the valve and started the Model A. I was so mad at myself. <laughs> it, it's always said to me, did you turn the gas on? Well, I never, ever, ever forgot to turn the gas on after that. And the storm in 52, I think it was, came along and it cut right through the southern end of Island Beach right to the bay and it just dug a big trench and all the way through it took all the boats we had down there and that Model A out uh, when you came down in the morning the only thing you could see was just the top of that Model A and I said to Joby oh that's terrible it's gone oh no we'll get it out of there and they got <laughs> three or four cars and they yanked it out and they it was unbelievable they hosed it down and with salt water, of course, the only water they had down there. Got the sand all out of it, rushed around with it for a day or so, and next thing you know, it's going up the road in that model A. And it's, it's right That's now, it's, right now it's on display in the, yeah, still here. of course then it was a sedan type. Yeah. Now, it's a, now it's a truck type. But yeah. uh, he said, all you need for some model A is a pair of pliers and a screwdriver. You usually get it going. Yeah. Just, as long as you remember to turn the gas yeah, on. Well, you have to be smart, too. <laughs> that was a great story. Yeah. My association with the beach and beach buggies and fishing started when I was around four years old. My father took me fishing to the ocean. And I loved fishing. and. Eventually, um, we moved to Seaside Park, and I uh, became fascinated with the idea of owning a beach buggy. 
most of the beach buggies were army jeeps, little army jeeps, or Model A's. So a friend of mine taught me to drive on the beach. He had a little jeep, and uh, he he uh, told me if if I wanted to get out of the track, I had to give it a little more gas and turn the wheel a certain way. And uh, so I did all that. I got went through all my lessons, and I guess I passed. And I was all ready to buy my own beach buggy. So I did find one. I found one at a tackle store. It was a uh, Model A, fully equipped for the beach. It had homemade uh, pole holders and a cool rack and um, all kinds of paraphernalia uh, inside of it, cup holders, uh, fire extinguishers, which I had to use one time, all kinds of stuff. And it had great big tires on it, which enabled it to go on the beach. They were bald, we call them Cadillac tires. And if you deflated the tires, uh, you could just go on the beach. You didn't need four-wheel drive, and it was great. So that was my first beach buggy, and I paid $90 for it. And my friends told me I paid too much. It was too expensive. They took me for a ride. <laughs> However, it had passed inspection, so I was okay for the, on the road for a full year. And I did drive it to Tom's River several times. It was a 1931 four-door sedan, and I drove it on the beach, and I just had a good time. I just love this thing. My family owned a business in Seaside Park about um, a block from the entrance to Island Beach State Park, and I kept my Model A in the backyard. And one day, um, I guess because it was kind of rusty, Something happened with the muffler and the muffler pipes, and when I turned on the uh, turned the key to the buggy, uh, the, something backfired, and all these flames shot out from under the hood of the car. And my neighbor was outside uh, cleaning the dog run with a hose, and and he saw these flames, and he. He took the hose and he held the hose on the flames, and which made everything worse. So in the meantime, someone called the fire company, and uh, I guess they were on their way, but I couldn't wait. My, my buggy was burning. So I grabbed the fire extinguisher that was inside the buggy, and I thought, oh, I'm going to put this fire out. And I pulled the handle, but it was so rusty, the whole thing just fell apart. <laughs> it didn't work at all. So anyway, the fire company arrived, and put the fire out. And it was okay. We fixed the, the buggy. We repaired everything and it was good to go in a couple of months. So uh, they saved my, my model A. My husband's family uh, had a lot of beach buggies. There were uh, model A's in all different conditions and some were torn apart and made into like little pickup trucks and some were left whole. But for the most part, they used to take the bodies off these Model A's and it would make them lighter. They'd go on the beach better and then they'd put a little, like a flat back on the back of them, a little wooden flat back and then they can carry things. They could find wood on the beach and throw everything on this flat back and then drive off the beach back to the house. The Model A's were basically trouble-free. There wasn't too much we had to do. We, and we, you know, f keep them filled with gas, change the oil once in a while. And um, uh, most of them eventually had leaks in the radiators. So the cure-all for that was to use coarsely ground black pepper and oatmeal and then just take the radiator cap off and dump all this down into the water, and that kind of sealed the, the leaks a little bit anyway, for, the, for a while. It worked for a while. And uh, uh, we had to check the, uh, there was a little glass bowl underneath the gas filter, and we had to look in that to make sure there wasn't any water in the gas. And other than that, it was, they were good to go. I, I've never seemed to have a problem.